Yes, ladies and gentlemen, live, we are at the Big Texan Lane. So we hope you'll have a chance to practice what Nelson told you. Now, this is a perfect confrontation. Live from Houston, Texas, the U.S. Open Championship one-game head-to-head match. Mark Roth against Marshall Holman. Couldn't script it any better, Bo. <laughs> the two top players in the country today, and there's a saying on the tour, if you crank the ball, you go to the bank. If you stroke, you go broke. Well, they've eliminated all the strokers, and we got just two crankers left. So going for the big the, money. Title they want. There he goes. He's had 18 strikes in two games. He comes up with a one in the first frame. And now, a look at Mark Roth looking for his first major title. like that. Mark Roth feels he's at the very top of his game. Let's hear him tell us about it. Well, this is definitely my best start, and I, the reason I feel is I was home during the break, and I was only balling twice a week, and I really wasn't into the game, but when I came out back on a tour, I really wanted a ball, and my desire is better than it ever has, and I'm concentrating and bowling better. I think that's the reason why I'm bowling well beginning of the winter. That's right. He led from the start. This man, match all even after, after one frame. Now he's on the left lane. Went over to get a piece of tape in between frames. Tighten that thumb hole. Didn't quite come up, leaving the two. The feel the player is trying to go for is where the thumb hole and the finger holes are fairly tight and they don't have to squeeze the ball. There, Mark Roth hung the thumb a little bit, and you see the ball break late, leaving the 2-8, and the pin rolls around, knocks out the 8-pin, makes it a much easier spare. And Mark Roth blows it, the 2-pin. <laughs> he wouldn't have got either one of them, so it didn't make any difference what stood up. Erratic Mark Roth here just didn't take right by the 2, has opened the door for Holman early in the match. Marshall taking a little extra time. I don't think he's ever had a gift from Roth like that and open the <laughs> first two frames. Mark has definitely been tough on Marshall over the years. All but the 10 pin on the right lane for Marshall Holman, who yep. has won two games up to now. And I know what's going through his mind, Chris. I would have carried that against anybody but Mark. <laughs> Marshall with the spear will lead by 12. This is the title game for the U.S. Open Championship. 240 started. We're down to the final two. Mark constantly working on that bowling ball. And out of that 240, Chris, we had 96 league players, 144 touring pros. Oh, his release. So smooth. Nine strikes in each of the two victories coming into this. Strike in the third. And now, after an open, missing the two-pin, here is Mark Roth, third frame. Did not come up. Now the 2-8. Let's see how he shoots this. He just went flying by the two-pin last time. He has to have some bad thoughts running through his mind. He's not getting out of the thumb hole very well, and that's probably the thing that hurts good bowlers the most, an uncomfortable feel in the ball. Then again, he also missed his spare the last time he had a shot at it. Chopping the two off the eight back-to-back -back open frames by a great champion, Mark Roth. Chris, major titles have avoided or eluded Mark Roth. He's dominated the tour for the last three and a half, four years. Once again, the U.S. Open, his first chance at a major title this year, has an extremely bad start. He trails by 23 with two misses, one in the second and third frame. And then comes up with a high hit and a split, the 3-10. I don't know if it's psychological or what. It has to be working on his mind. It has nothing to do with the lane conditions. It's the feel of the ball. Mark hung in the first ball he threw. He tried to change the tape. You can see the shot there for the pros. Not too tough, 310 cross lane. But Roth is struggling within himself and with his equipment. So now three open frames, a 34-pin lead held by Marshall Holman is in a row. 
And there's one that slid by, leading the bucket on the right lane. Just about the same combination Roth had on the left-hand lane. Roth, the 2-8, went by it. Let's see how Holman gets it. Now, of course, Marshall has bowled more games on this pair, so he should have a feel of the, of the pair. Here's the long approach, 17 feet. Marshall uses it all for his power approach. He didn't think he was going to get him. He actually got saved by the four pin. That's the same place that Roth hit on a 2-8 combination, but the ball hit the two pin, the four pin, then deflected into the eight. Holman, who has strike spare, strike spare, would not think that'd be much of a lead in a major championship like this, but through four frames, he has a 34-pin lead. Bowler with intensity. All right, his third strike in five frames. So let's see now, Mark Roth, sometimes too long to think after three open frames, let off with a strike. Now shooting in the fifth frame, right lane. more like it. The crowd was almost completely silent after the box opened for the third time in a row in the fourth frame, but he started taking a little more time, as you noticed on the, on the approach with that one, Chris. Starts setting himself, starting using a little concentration, not bowling with just complete low momentum. He's got his thumb hole right. Look, he's taking his time now. Watch him come back. All right. A double after three open frames for Mark Roth. 24-pin lead held by Marshall Holman. He has a strike up, shooting in the sixth frame. The final match live from Big Texan Lanes in Houston. Holman just cool as he can be in this match. He just answered Ross double with a double. Taking a little extra time, Marshall's calling for a re-rack. He's entitled to one a game. Wants to settle the match down, get it in perspective. He leads by 34. He can really, really put it on Mark Roth with one more strike. And he gets that re-rack. Marshall Holman of Medford, Oregon. Following our professional bowlers tour, ABC's Wide World of Sports. Oh, there is a three-bagger that increases the lead to 44 pins. And Roth is up with a double working. He's in a must situation early in the match. He still has four frames to go, but he trails by 44, has a double work. Three in a row for Mark Roth. If you just joined us, the opener with a strike, three open frames, then three strikes in a row. Holman, I've never seen him so intense. He uh, always has a lot of tension. He's doing exercises. He's cranking his neck. He's getting up doing Half knee bends, a little psyching maybe, <laughs> against his friend but an opponent, Mark Roth. So Roth, a four-bagger, now 24 pounds, separating these two champions. The power of Roth pulling him back into the match, strings four in a row here, has cut Holman's lead to 24, and more importantly, has given uh, Marshall something to think about. And another bucket. This one on the right lane, 20 pins now separating these two pros. In the six pin count, the bucket cuts into the pin count lead. That is only 20 pins. Roth can now close the gap with two more strikes. Before, with, if Holman had kept his count up with an eight or nine pin count, Roth would have had to have three strikes. Well, he's shown you twice and in two different ways how to cover the two, four, five, eight. <laughs> Well, the pressure's starting to get to Marshall Holman. Sometimes the hardest thing in the game of bowling is to start off with a tremendous big lead like you have, and like uh, Marshall had, and then have Roth come charging back. Still 20 pins is a big deficit. Two frames to go. U.S. Open Championship on the line. A 10 pin on the left lane for Marshall Holman, the leader. Once again, Marshall loses another pin to count. After, if Marshall makes his spare, Roth can get up with strikes in ninth and 10th and take the lead. Mark Roth is in the finals of a previous United States Open, 76 at Grand Prairie, Texas. It was won by Paul Mosier. And our colleague Nelson Burton Jr. won it in 78, Petraglia 77, Joe Berardi 79. Coming up high, leaving the 
and really a crucial shot to push the pressure on Holman. Roth just absolutely has not getting out of the ball well at all, Chris. His follow-through was so short that time. We'll have to ask him afterwards what the problem was, but I believe it's his thumb hole. When you lose the thumb hole feel, you don't have that smooth, even stroke and that good wrist action. Paul Marshall is checking the official score sheet held by Harry Golden and Frank Esposito. Roth was marking with a spare in that foundation frame. Chris, Marsh, uh, Mark Roth must double in the 10th to force Holman to mark. Nothing that Roth can do can shut out Holman, but if he doesn't strike here, Holman will be the winner. Sliding by mm, one, two, four, ten. A secondary thing that's happened today is Mark has stood by the sidelines, and these lanes are slicker or a little tighter than we've been playing on most of the season so far, and Roth cannot get that powerful hook to work at the back end. So it's a 179 for Mark Roth. Holman is up, stroking in a hurry. It's a high hit, leaving the 36910 on the right line. But it's all over. Roth with a disastrous game, 179, four open frames. Can never recall hard, uh, Mark having such a poor game on national television. There has to be a reason. It's funny it happened in the major tournament. Holman opening the 10th is still secondary, has a 200 game and a U.S. Open championship. Five strikes, a 21 pin margin. He won two major titles. He's won two back-to-back -back tournaments on our live telecast. Here's the United States Open champion, Marshall Holman. Hey, thanks a lot, Chris. This is just super. You know, last week when I won in Grand Prairie, I said I want to make that Texas sweep, and I love Texas. This is just great. I can't, I can't believe it. You know, after last year being on the bench for those 10 weeks, now coming back, I'm in great form, and, uh, well, it's just, it's like a, a new life, you know? It's just a, a new beginning for me. You seem more pumped up today than I've ever seen you. Well, I, I am pumped up, although I've got a new strategy uh, that What's I'm not... That? Well, I, I'm trying to keep my emotions a little more tame towards the start of the match. I'd like to thank Pete Couture, who's a fellow pro. He's the one who told me about that, and uh, it really helped out a lot. It Keep my emotions level, and then when I really need to make the shots, pump up for the big ones. What can you say to the great champion you defeated here today, Mark Roth? I can only say that uh, I have been in the position uh, leading the tournament by four or five hundred pins, only to lose in the, in the TV match. It really isn't uh, a fair and equitable way to, uh, to decide a, a professional bowling tournament, but it is our way, and uh, we live with it, and Mark has to live with it, and uh, Mark Roth is the greatest. He's my partner. Uh, I'd like to bowl all doubles tournaments with this man because uh, he's the greatest. All right, we're all set, and Mark, while well, you have a chance to think about what you want to say, I know it's hard. Here's $11,000 runner-up in the United States Open. Well, uh, Marshall Ball good today. He made some great shots when he needed them, and uh, I didn't make any. I just was out to lunch today. I had trouble, but uh, I'd like to thank the Bellinger Prize Association of America for hosting this tournament, and I'd like to see him back next year, too. Is that a class guy, ladies and gentlemen? Okay. It certainly is. Mark Roth has all the class in the world. And I'd also like to ditto that and thank the bowling proprietors and uh, everybody here in the, in the Houston area. It's, it's really been a memorable week, and uh, it's one I definitely won't forget for many, many, many years. It's one you'll remember, too, for a long time, Mark. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I've never seen you three opens in a row. No, that's the first time this week. <laughs> <laughs> He's kidding. <laughs> Not three times bowler of the year in as many years. Uh, Mark, I guess you'll be going to St. Louis. I'm going to go home for a day or two, then go straight to St. Louis. Well, bring Jackie. That might bring you some better luck. I hope so. Okay, Mark Roth, let's hear it for him. Nelson Burton, Jr., come here. Nelson is a 1978 United States Open champion. And, Bo, I want you to take care of the uh, presentation here with Mr. Lacey. Well, Mark, congratulations. Marshall, congratulations. Mr. Lacey, you have a great tournament, and you have a great champion. Well, thank you very much. And on behalf of the Bowling Proprietors Association of America and our 4,100 4, members, I would like to congratulate you and give you this check for $21,000. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Lacey.